John Keo, who's been dubbed by The Economist as Mr. Creativity. Uh, he's a global authority on uh, new media and organizational transformation. And uh, John, it's a, it's a pleasure to have you here today. Thanks for having me. Uh, John, uh, you, you talk about jamming or the art of, of getting things done. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, jamming is a word uh, I like uh, because it comes from jazz, which is a uh, perfect analog for the innovation process. So we're not talking about radar or Smucker's Jam, but about what musicians do when they get up on stage and count off and start playing new notes that sound good, okay. right? And in a sense, innovation is about creating something new and in the moment that has value. Mm -hmm. So jazz musicians, uh, in a funny kind of way, have a lot of tacit knowledge about how that process works. Nobody really made the bridge between the world of improvised music and the world of let's say, improvised business. And that's been one of my interests over the past decade or so. OK. Uh, uh, is innovation more art or science, and, and, and why? That's one of these uh, um, uh, kind of gotcha questions, I think. <laughs> because actually, it's both. I mean, uh, first of all, I don't really think innovation is a field yet in the sense of having a, uh, a well-codified set of best practices and professional standards that everyone agrees on. I think it's still a, uh, an area that's in the process of, of becoming a field. Um, and I think that uh, it will never be reducible to a set of rules, because um, creativity ultimately is uh, rooted in the ability of human beings to come up with flashes of insight and inspiration that uh, are much more akin to the creative process in art or, or science in the sense of scientists than in the sense of science as a set of rational, logical rules. Okay. Okay. How about improvisation? Uh, it would seem that a lot of executives may be um, a, a bit hesitant to try to make things up on the fly, perhaps, mm, sure. uh, out of a fear to be uh, you know, seen as unprepared or, or, or what have you. But right. God role, forbid. Yeah, well, I mean, what role do you we're see? We're always, I mean, uh, the fact of the matter is we're always unprepared because the future is always throwing things at us that we can't predict. So the okay. question is not, you can never be fully prepared. The question is, how do you deal with the fact of, in a sense, always being unprepared, but use that as an energizing process to be responsive. OK, OK. This may come as some news to, uh, to some well, of you out there. <laughs> you know, the, the way that uh, many of us learned management is not necessarily a good fit with the realities of today, because the realities of today are all about turbulence and change and unpredictability. Uh, and so you can make all the plans you want, but they may or may not be uh, relevant to the situation at hand. So, by the way, so improvisation doesn't mean doing whatever you want. I mean, jazz improvisers are incredibly disciplined. Just like, I would say, entrepreneurs are business improvisers. Okay. They're incredibly disciplined. But they're not disciplined by the standards of a bureaucratic organization. Okay. Right? Um, what, what is required of, of companies and of leaders to enable and empower the kind of improv that, that you just described? Uh, is there a new set of expectations, or should, should companies be looking for leaders who bring this sort of empowerment around creativity, around innovation, around improv? Um, is there a new set of expectations, given all the dynamics in the world that you just described? I think there is a new set of expectations, because organizations that don't know how to reinvent themselves are not going to be around uh, indefinitely. And so uh, generating new sources of value is, is, a, is an absolute requirement. Now, you can go overboard. I mean, you know, companies have to stick to the knitting, and they have to do new stuff, and you have to keep it all in balance. But typically, I find that the balance is much more overweighted to doing the things you know how to do, as opposed to the things that uh, you don't know how to do but need to figure out. OK. OK. All right, interesting. What are the key drivers, uh, John, as you see them, uh, of innovation? Uh, are there some key levers uh, that, that an executive leader might have that he or she can can try to pull to to spur the mm. creativity. So you're talking about management drivers now. Yes, yeah. Yes. Well, innovation is a very complex phenomenon, so it's hard to reduce to a set of um, you know five principles or seven you know fundamental steps or, or whatever. I, uh, however, having that having been said, uh, I think there are some fundamentals. First of all. Um, a leader needs to be able to articulate some sense of purpose. Uh, why, are, uh, uh, why is an organization going to even bother to be engaged with innovation? Because just generating new stuff, mm -hmm. even if it's profitable, isn't necessarily a call to action. Right? Okay. The second thing is um, to look at innovation 
like a, uh, a strategic resource like any other, transforms the internal discussion about um, uh, resourcing it, uh, anticipating the requirements for innovation, and also weaving innovation into the overall corporate strategy. And then the third is, uh, which organizations in my experience typically uh, fall down on, is uh, figuring out what I call the stewardship function. In other words, who's responsible? If you don't have people who are responsible and accountable for innovation, you won't have innovation. And people at the bottom can generate ideas. People at the top can say they want it and are going to authorize it. But unless you have some locus of responsibility, which has some you know, accountability and some standing, n uh, not much will happen. Uh does an organization need clarity around both the consequences and the rewards should they invest in a discovery process that leads to a breakthrough? Uh, well, uh, do the yeah. punishments and the, <laughs> and the rewards, punishments, do, they right. be, do they need to be uh, sort of laid bare at the beginning? Well, it would be nice, but I think it's hard to do that in the sense that you mean by clarity. I think that leaders can paint a vision of what is possible and what the upside and the downside are. And okay. in fact, a sense of urgency is really important, and a sense of urgency typically comes not from some abstract idea, but because you've got a story that really gets you in the gut. But I don't think you can be precise about it in the sense of planning uh, uh, precision, right? Okay. So you, okay. it's like storytelling, okay. in a way. Okay. Um, uh, from your perspective, John, is, is, is innovation, is it a process, is it a mindset, is it an extension of corporate culture? Is it an amalgam of, of all those things? I mean, what, what really at, at the heart of it mm -hmm. is innovation? Well, innovation is all of the things that you mentioned, uh, but it, I think at its heart, it's a set of uh, choices that organizations make about practices that they can get very, very good at that they decide are the key processes for innovation. So whether that means how you invest money in new things or how you uh, get insights into customers and what they truly desire, or whether you have a, 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 an ability to do experiments. Uh, it, it almost doesn't matter what the specifics are. It matters that a company has made some choices about what it chooses to get good at. And, and frankly, most organizations, in my experience, haven't even considered that question very carefully okay. in, with regard to innovation. Okay, okay. Um, I know The Economist has dubbed you Mr. Creativity. Um, as you look out at the global business landscape right now and the business uh, operating environment that we're all working in, um, what would you prescribe as, as, as an antidote to some of the troubles we're seeing out in the global economy? What's, what's the real opportunity out there in the global business landscape? Uh, uh, do you see any real pockets of opportunity or innovation or growth uh, in, in the global economy that we should all be uh, watching and, and, you know, and, and, and hoping, hoping that you know, come to pass? <laughs> I think the world is filled with opportunities. I think that um, the whole kind of digital economy is, you know, we're about 10 minutes into that movie. There's so much to be done. I think, you know, the sentiment around uh, reinvention of education, which formerly was, you know, looking at it as a big business tar baby, has now shifted completely to looking at it as the next multi-trillion dollar uh, idea. Broadband has yet to be adopted on a global basis. So the fundamentals of an innovation infrastructure are still needing to be put in place. The other thing is, you know, these new technologies really change the relationship between citizens and government and companies and experts and, you know, the governed and the governors. So uh, the notion that we can begin to harness the creativity of all people around the world and have people begin to take more responsibility for addressing their own needs mm. uh, is, is a fundamental uh, shift. So I actually think it's a great time to be uh, an entrepreneur or an innovator because there's more than enough to do. So it sounds like uh, the future is bright. There's a lot of opportunity out there. People ought to be looking opportunistically at, 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 at some of the choices that we all have. Well, look, I mean, we, we have a lot of problems, tons. I mean, I would say, you know, if, if you were a pessimist, you'd have a lot to um, be thinking about. Uh, the condition of the world is not particularly good. There's a lot of conflict. There's environmental problems. There's sustainability problems, all of which flipped on their side are opportunities. Um, and so uh, the question is what you choose to do about it. I mean, the economies of the world are not in great shape right now. Structural unemployment is a big issue. But if you flip that on its side, you know, encouraging entrepreneurship and innovation creates new jobs. But you have to put the mechanisms in place for doing that, for example. Okay. Terrific. Well, great. Uh, John K.O., it's a pleasure to, to have you here and spend a few Thank you.